Hi, I've just this second received my Electric Eel Nano 2 from the uh, the Kickstarter and so I thought I'd try and do a quick video unboxing it and seeing how quickly I can get spinning on it. Um, okay, so here it is. We have a manual and some yarn guides. Um, it looks like a drive band and the, oh that's the tension band as well. Okay, so I think they're just spares, so I'll just put those to the side for now. And there's already a, a bobbin on it, I can see. Lovely. I think this is in really good, really good condition. Some of the other boxes that I've seen on Facebook are, uh, are quite mangled. I think I've, some people have been very unlucky. It's already got, oh, it's already got two. There's the... Uh, the um, orifice hook. It's already got two suction clips on, so I'll just get the other ones on that have fallen off. Should be another ah, there it is. There we are. Oh, there's a spare. Ah, I think that's just fallen off in the box. Okay. Gosh, looking at it, it uh, just it feels a lot more solid than the original Nanos. Okay, so I'll slide that back on. That's just fallen off. Okay, so this is the battery that I use for my um, electric e wheel Nano One Point One. So I think I think most batteries that have a USB attachment would power the Nano, but let's see. Okay, so that, there's a spare drive band and drive band already on. So that's fine. That's good. That's all spares. Okay, so got a little bit of waste yarn here that I'd use as a, a leader. Sometimes I just um, tape it on, but for now I'll just do a. Is this a lark's head? Not something like that, anyway. Okay, so I'll move my yarn guide to the front so it's sort of lined up with the orifice. Move this one here because this is where I want my yarn to feed on. to get some smaller, well I have got some smaller suction cups so they won't, these don't fit brilliantly on my battery but that's fine. Okay now, I'll that in here. there's a, oh there's the switch. Oh let's see. I think that's, Amer that's an American socket, American plug. Um, I might find an adapter for that, but to be honest, I normally just power mine by the battery anyway. What's that? Oh, that looks like some sort of extension so that I can... Uh, so that the, the cable doesn't need to be quite so short, possibly. I'm guessing. Um, okay, so for now, I'll just try and see if I can get spinning on this. Nope, <laughs> I do need the extension. Okay, there we are. That's tight. 
So what I will probably do in the future is get another cable so that I can extend this cable so that the switch is much closer to me. I've done that with my other Nano and that works really well so I can have the switch on my lap. Might be a bit short, but we'll see. Let's see how we get on. I don't know what I did wrong. <laughs> I just didn't turn the speed up, that's what I didn't do. There we are. Okay, so that's going anti clockwise, I want it the other way. So that's sliding round. So I need to just make sure that that's got enough. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to take the bobbin off. I'm going to take the drive band off. Um, just take that off. Pull that off. So, I want a much longer leader, I think that's part of the problem. The other thing you can do, yeah, she says it doesn't want to come off. The other thing you can do. So what you can do is sort of trap, trap the end of your leader in the end of the bobbin and that should stop it spinning round and round and round. Okay, so that should, that should work now. I think I will be changing the uh, stretchy tension bank because I do find the spring and the Chinese knotting cord to be much more responsive. Might help if I thread the yarn through the orifice. There we are. Okay, the eye's going into the bobbin now, I can see that. But I definitely have a lot less take it than I would with the, with the spring and the Chinese knotting cord. So I'll just increase the speed. On the take up. Yeah, with this I do I did used to find when I used the elastic that I needed to keep repositioning the elastic.
I think the problem now, I've got too much twist on it, it doesn't want to feed on. I need to increase the tension more. I think I'm going the right way for that. Okay. This is a lot noisier than my um, original, well, my 901, but when the 901 first came I did do quite a few alterations to quieten it down so I'll, I think I'll probably be doing that to this one as well So I don't want it there because that's going to be on guard along. Yeah, I do feel like if I switched out the uh, tension band, I'd, I'd not need. To, I wouldn't need to be running it quite so quickly because I certainly don't have the motor running quite so fast with the uh the, with the 1.1 okay i'm going to make some alterations to it and, uh, and then hopefully you'll see the difference it makes so what i need to do Oh, first I'll unplug the wheel. I'll remove it from the battery just to make it easier to see what I'm doing. Okay. So, the drive band, sorry, the tension band is just uh, knotted in place. Ah, right. So, that I need to thread that through then. Okay. So, and then, so what I will do is I will uncoil the tension knob so that the, I'll be honest, I haven't done this before, so um, I'm not really sure what I'm going to come up with. Okay, so that's, let's have a look. So that is knotted on. Okay. No, it's not. Yes, it is knotted on. Yes. That's knotted on. I can't pull that out, can I? Somehow I need to unknot this and cut that to get rid of the elastic completely. Okay, so I'm just going to cut this. Try and stretch it and cut it so the end is as short as possible. And then pull that out there. I'm going to replace it. See, this is my 
Nano 1.1 and I have a, an Ashwood spring. Yeah, I've just taped that in place and I'm using Chinese knotting cord over the bobbin and um, crimp beads that um, help me to adjust the tension. So hopefully I'm not going to need the crimp beads. I will just attach the Chinese knotting cord to the knob somehow. So let's have a look. I'm going to have a go at changing the tension band on the Nano 2 uh, from a piece of elastic to a, um, that's the original elastic, which I find it, it almost, it doesn't grip enough. That is part of the problem. Um, so I fi I'm finding that I have to run it at a much higher speed to get the drawing that I need. So I'm going to change it to some nylon Chinese knotting cord. And this is an Ashford brake band spring that I've cut the loops off. So to do that, I'm first going to thread on a ex an extra large crimp. Okay, so thread that on first. Then I sort of wrap it around the spring, sort of open up the spring and Take it around a couple of loops there. And then I want to get this end back through the crimp again, somehow. It's probably the trickiest part. that's through now. So now I want to use my pliers to just close up the crimp bead and that's held in place now. Okay and just cut that off. Now to start off with I will just grip this to the case. Later on I'll attach it with some some Gorilla Tape. I find Gorilla Tape is pretty good for that. I'll just open up the spring again and slide it onto the edge. There. Yeah, later on, you know, I'll just make sure it's just under one, one loop. Bit tricky when I'm trying to film it as well. Um, there, okay. Later on, I'll just put a little bit of tape on top of that to keep that in place. So take it over the bobbin. Now, somehow, I've got to attach this through the tension knob. So I'll just give myself a little bit of extra there. And I will make a loop, a slip knot, hook it over. Let's see, hook it over like that and close it up. And if I knot that in place a few times, that should hopefully be okay. Cut it. Now then, hopefully I should be able to tighten that, turn the knob. With a few rotations, it should hold in place. Now hopefully, and you can see as I pull the knob, the spring starts to expand. Okay. 
So I will definitely take that in place later on. So now I'll just see if this makes a difference. I just turn the speed dial down because I had it all the way up. So what I need to do, it's definitely another reason for taping it in place. I had to move that along and rotate that so that it clears, it clears the arm. Yeah, so if I tape that in place, that will be fine. Now there's a bit of noise, so I'm going to see if I can quieten that down because it is noisier than the, uh, the current 1.1, which I have done a few modifications to. Okay, I've done a bit of a fix to it. I remembered when the nano the kickstarter nano came there was a bit of a problem um the bearings hadn't the front bearing hadn't been pushed on uh firmly enough and i had the same problem with my first nano when that came and i gave it a push and it made a massive difference to the speed and to the noise that it made it was making it made a lot less noise so i've just done the same now i just pushed the front bearing and I think, I think I've solved the problem, um, both of the volume and of part of the fact that it wasn't drawing on. Okay, so that is a lot quieter. I just need to tighten, there we are. Need to tighten the tension band a bit. There. Is a lot quieter. Okay, the drawing on is is the same as it was before, but it was definitely quieter.
They seem to need a lot more attention than the original Nano 1.2, the Nano 1.1. Not really sure why. Maybe it's got caught on something. Yeah, that's not drawing on at all, and I don't know why. Maybe it's the hooks? Ah, it's getting caught on the hook. Yes, that was getting caught on the hook, that was the problem there. Yeah, because there's pole now. No, there isn't. There was briefly pole, but now it's pigtailing again. Okay. I might change the hooks actually. See if that makes a difference. I've now made myself some wire yarn guides. These are similar to the ones that I made for the Electric e Wheel Nano 1 and, and the Nano 1.1. Um, I'm hoping that this might help fix some of the take-up issue I was having. So let's try again. Okay, if this doesn't help, I will be um, having a look at the orifice reducer because it does feel a bit rough inside and I should think that that would slow things down as well. Okay, so let's see if this helps. I may have to do a bit more work on these yarn guides. I'll start at a lower speed, see if this helps. It's still pigtailing a bit, so I need to do increase the tension.
just seem to have improved it a bit. Yes, actually, it just seem to have improved it quite a bit. Right, still pigtailing. It's a definite improvement there. Nope, pigtailing again. I wonder if maybe the orifice reducer is slightly rough inside. Um, I will go and get one of my old ones, see if that helps. I think I fixed everything now. <laughs> okay, so um, some people were noticing some rough sections inside the orifice um i here was my orifice i didn't think it looked too bad but i can if i look closely at the edge i can see a rough section just on the outside and obviously i can't see right inside but actually there may be some rough sections inside so maurice is recommending that you file the inside of the orifice i mean i would I would do it anyway, regardless of whether you can see rough sections, because um, I think that was the main thing that was causing my my drawing problems. It, it just wasn't pulling on. Uh, but I've I've already got a an orifice reducer that I've designed myself, um, so I wasn't I wasn't going to sand back that one. So this has um, sections where you can hold your yarn in place it just and sort of wrap it round so that's what i normally use and so mine was already um filed so it's fine it doesn't need smoothing now the other alteration i've made is i bought an extension cable um i didn't really understand why the switch was here and the extension extension cable was at the front so i've bought an extension cable that it's it's a um, mini USB extension cable, and so it just extends the length of the switch. So now I don't need the battery underneath because that was, doesn't really help. So I've just attached a um, a small battery. So you can, you can use any kind of small battery charger with a USB attached. So this is going to be my setup from now on, um, and I'll just demonstrate how it, with the smoother orifice reducer in, it, it does what it works a lot better. Um, I may have been a bad scientist in that I've changed the, the tension, I've changed the brake band and I've changed the yarn hooks, but I was probably going to do that anyway. But I, I really think that the main problem was the orifice reducer. So I'm going to demonstrate now that it, it's much, much better. Normally I would sit with the, um, the switch sitting in my lap, but uh, I'm just standing at a table here to demonstrate now. I'm not having to run it at the same high speeds I did because now it is just drawing on much better. So I think I fixed the problem and uh, I did the updates that I was going to do, the modifications that I was going to do anyway, but I just probably did them a bit sooner than, than I originally intended. So 
it's working much, much better. And it's a lot quieter. I may put a film of the set, how it sounded when it first came, just to show a comparison at the end of this video.